Hey, what's up everybody? I know this is kind of kind of freaky with uh, not very much light going on here. It kind of looks like Halloween or something. Anyways, uh, wanted to bring you a cool demonstration today. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may not have seen it, but uh, kind of a cool demonstration to teach you a little, about, a little bit about um, classified areas. Mostly today, um, it's just about dust and uh, class two areas and uh, one specific group in particular. So anyways, I just want to read to you real quick the, the definition of a class two area. So bear with me here. A class two location are those that are hazardous because of the presence of combustible dust. So we're going to be doing a little demonstration here with combustible dust. Note that the dust must be present in sufficient quantities for a fire or hazard for a fire or explosion hazard to exist. So you've got to have a ton of this dust around. You've got to have a ton of it maybe on the floor, in the air, uh, tabletops, whatever. It says you've got to have uh, sufficient quantities. The fact that there is some combustible dust present does not mean a class two hazardous location exists. So even though there's just a little bit, doesn't mean that it's to be classified as a hazardous location. Uh, to be considered a dust, the combustible material must exist as a finely divided solid of 420 microns or less. Such a dust will pass through a number 40 sieve. Just as a class one, division one, and two, the subdivision of class two into divisions one and two identifies the likelihood that there will be an explosion or hazard. Now, <clears throat> a little while ago on the podcast, I, uh, I did an episode about a sugar factory explosion. And I, uh, you know, I was, I was surprised that, uh, that the explosion took place because of the, the dust that was in the air. And I wasn't aware that uh, sugar could, uh, could be explosive. And so I started doing a little more research and I actually found this cool experiment that I'm going to show you. But in a class two, uh, group G, it says dust include plastic dust, most chemical dust, and food and grain dust. They're not electrically conductive. These dust in general have the highest thermal insulating characteristics and the lowest ignition temperatures. Thus, dust, dust ignition proof equipment for use in group G atmospheres must have the lowest surface temperatures to prevent ignition of a layer by heat generated by the equipment. So let's, let's read what uh, it says for group G, agricultural dust. It says grain, flour, sugars, spices, rice, and certain polymers. So, what I have here today is I've got some powdered sugar and I've got some cornstarch. So, this is this pretty interesting. I'm going to close the door real quick and turn the light off so you can see the flame better. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've, I've built me this little, little funnel. It's actually a... Uh, it's actually one of those little ear things that the doctors look into your ears with. My son took one the other day when he was at the doctor. I just hooked a straw up to it, and I just loaded up just a little bit of powdered sugar in here. Now, I uh, originally performed the experiment with cornstarch, and it worked pretty well. And I thought, so I thought, okay, let's try it with uh, let's try it with powdered sugar too. So I've had a harder time making it work with, work with powdered sugar. So if it doesn't work this first time, uh, just bear with me. But you see, I got just a little little flame here, and I'm going to. Okay, so that's that's powdered sugar right there. Okay, so you've got your flame, you've got your source of ignition, you've got the oxygen in the air, and then you've got this really fine uh, powder, dust powder. So let's try it one more time with uh, with powdered sugar. Okay, see how, see how crazy that is? All right, so now let's try it with cornstarch. So I just got just this little tiny, tiny scoop of cornstarch. Just gonna put that in there. Hope I didn't put too much in there. See, that's a much, much bigger flame with cornstarch. Okay, so this is just proving the uh, need to be careful in these these areas that could be classified as explosion proof or hazardous, okay? Not necessarily explosion proof, but hazardous. So you need to know, I'm gonna open this door again. 
you need to know where you're working, the environment you're working in, and uh, what kind of what kind of equipment you need to be using. Make sure that if you're, you know, unfamiliar with these types of installations, that you uh, get with somebody who does know. If you're kind of leading up, heading up the job, because you don't want it to turn into a potentially hazardous situation. So, anyways. Uh, these are some of the kind of things that I'm covering in SESKU. Um, the link is above. You can head over there, get your free issue of SESKU, and uh, it covers uh, the free issue covers uh, five things you know need to know about paralleling conductors. And uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching the video. Share this with a friend that might need to know about uh, need to know about these situations. And until uh, next time, stay grounded.